Hi everyone, welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this Mini ITX motherboard from ASRock. This is the ASRock A75M ITX. It is designed for Fusion FM1 socket AMD processors. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box. As mentioned, this supports FM1 socket AMD CPUs and this does also support the latest dual core versions, the HX versions of those uh, CPUs. Has the A75 chipset as indicated down here course supports Windows 7. You also have some ASRock features such as XFast LAN and XFast USB which is uh, some boost modes for your Ethernet connection as well as your USB 3.0 performance. You also have a series of uh, features listed right here. You get four SATA 3 connectors, a combo cooler retention, supports DDR3 memory, uh, a lot of other features that we're going to get to inside the box. So uh, let's do that. Taking a look inside the box, here are your accessories. You of course get uh, the quick installation guide. You also have a disc here with the, the software utilities as well as drivers for the motherboard. Chances are if you head over to the ASRock website you can get updated versions of these drivers but you have the disc on hand just in case your internet's not working. You also have the quick installation guide that will uh, give you a closer look at the features of the motherboard. Also take you uh, in a walkthrough of the installation, setting up everything properly, so keep that on hand while you're doing your build. ASRAC has also included some serial ATA cables, uh, so these are uh, SATA Rev 1, 2, or 3 compatible, so you can use it with SATA Rev 1, 2, or 3 drives. There's two cables, one of them has an L-shaped bracket on one end. They've also provided an audio cable, so there's an 8th inch uh, audio extension cable. You also have the requisite motherboard backplate right there, so that goes uh, on your input and output area on your computer case, and then here is the motherboard itself. Taking a closer look at the A75M ITX, well, it's a mini ITX board, and if you're not familiar with this form factor, it is very small. So it me measures just under 7 inches by 7 inches, 6.7 to be exact, and uh, you can purchase a small form factor case that will fit a small motherboard like this very precisely. Uh, it's fun to do small builds because they're a bit more challenging but also you can fit a computer into a smaller footprint. Uh, it's ideal for home theater, PC use, uh, maybe a small gaming rig that's nice and portable. Uh, lots of different implementations you can do. Uh, but I'm just going to go over the features that we see here on the front of the board. I'm going to start off with the fan outs. You have two here on the upper left. One is the CPU fan, and that's a four pin fan connector. And then you also have a CPU fan too. You can use if you have uh, two fans on your CPU, or you can use that for a chassis fan as well. Finally, you have one more chassis fan connector, which is over here on this side. Again, that's also four pin, so you should have uh, plenty of fan outs to connect all the fans in a mini ITX case directly to the motherboard, which is nice. That gives you a bit more control over the fan speed, especially in a home theater PC type environment. You want to keep your fan speeds lower if possible, reduce noise, and uh, improve your viewing experience for movies and playing games. That being said, uh, I'm going to start down here on the bottom where you have your single PCI Express port. It's a full-length PCI Express 16X port, uh, so you can use this, for instance, uh, maybe a uh, a TV tuner card, for example, or if you did want to do a gaming PC, uh, it's a great port. You can slot in a gaming video card. And uh, one of the cool things about the FM1 socket with Fusion is that actually your APU that you install right here from AMD is going to have an integrated graphics card. If you happen to use also an AMD video card right here, you can actually uh, team those together in a uh, Crossfire X-like way uh, in order to sort of give yourself additive performance um, it's actually shown here on the box a little bit up here, which is uh, sort of giving you examples of there's your Lano 2.4 gigahertz APU with the 6670. Uh, you, add a, you add the 6670 and the Lano APU together, and it gives you additive performance. Anyway, lots of different uh, variations on that, but uh, you can team them together, which is pretty cool. Gives you a nice boost in your gaming performance. Uh, aside from that, uh, right above it, you have an HD audio out, this white connector right there, so you can connect your front panel uh, mic and headphone jacks. Right here is a few USB 2.0 headers, so the blue ones there are USB 2.0. The white one in the middle is actually a CIR, or an infrared header, and actually you can uh, manipulate this a little bit so you can uh, plug in a USB header for front panel to the middle port, so you can actually use the white and the blue connectors right there. So if you have a CIR compatible uh, receiver, you can use that to uh, give yourself a bit more control with a remote, 
which is pretty cool. Next to that, just since we're right here, is, a, uh, is your supplemental CPU power connector. So you're going to route a connector over there from your power supply. Moving over to the right side of the board, uh, there's a passive heat sink right here, here and that is uh, on top of the A75 chipset. Uh, A75 chipset gives you uh, control over these uh, serial ATA ports. So you have four, these are all serial ATA revision three, that's six gigabit per second ports. Uh, so they will be compatible with higher end uh, SSDs, of course, mechanical hard drives as well. Gives you plenty of speed there. Right here above them, these uh, white connectors there, your front panel connectors, so uh, your hard drive, LEDs, your power reset buttons. Moving up the side of the board, you also have the, uh, well, the aforementioned four-pin uh, fan connector. Directly inside that, you have a comm header if you want to make use of that. Uh, further up the board, you also have a speaker connector right there. That's optional, so uh, particularly helpful if you have a speaker that comes with your computer case. You can plug that in, listen to post sweeps, help you out with uh, debugging if you have any issues getting your system up. Uh, here you have a, uh, your main motherboard power connector. Typically, that's a 24-pin connector for most modern power supplies, but you can just plug in the uh, 20 pins right there if you don't have a power supply with 24-pin. Uh, it should work in most situations, uh, but you should reference the uh, APU that you purchased to go with this motherboard to make sure you're providing enough power. Um, right below that, you have your DDR3 slots, so you got two full-length uh, DDR3. Uh, they, they, are, they do support dual channel. Uh, it supports also DDR3 overclock speeds. Now bear in mind, uh, the memory controller is actually part of the APU that you purchased. So uh, you're going to need to reference APU, per APU that you purchased to uh, determine proper uh, DDR3 speeds. Uh, at minimum, all of them should support 1333, but you can also get memory overclock speeds of uh, 1866 as well as 2400. Uh, next to that, or in the upper left here, are the fan headers that I showed you guys before. And then uh, finally, on the surface of the board, of course, we have the FM1 socket, which is kind of at the center of everything, but that's where your APU goes. Again, APUs from AMD, uh, they use Fusion technology, so you get a CPU and a GPU in one. So with just that one uh, APU installed there, you can have video outs uh, by virtue of the video outs on the back of the board. And uh, again, also, you can supplement that with a discrete video card if you prefer but it gives you the option either way. Looking here at the back of the board, we can see all your input and output connect connectivity uh, that will be external. Uh, so we have a PS2 connector there, combo for a mouse or a keyboard. Also, you have four USB 3.0 ports. Those are the blue ports right there. You have a couple USB 2.0 ports right here. There's an eSATA port, and that is also SATA Rev 3, six gigabit per second. You also have a gigabit ethernet port right, right above there. Uh, that is a Realtek RTL 8111E uh, gigabit Ethernet adapter. Uh, and then here are your video outs. So these are going to work with your APU that's chosen. Uh, the video outs uh, have some integrated functionality. So this uh, HDMI out, for example, is 1.4A compatible, which means it will support stuff like uh, 3D. Uh, it also supports HDCP, which is very important if you're building a uh, small form factor um, home theater computer, and also supports, of course, full HD 1080p Blu-ray playback and HD DVD via the HDMI port. You also have a D-sub port here. You can use these both together, so you can actually have dual monitors via uh, both of these connectors. Uh, the D-sub port supports resolutions of up to 1920 by 1600. The HDMI supports resolutions of up to 1920 by 1200. To the right, we have uh, your analog and digital audio connections. So you have a mic, of course, as well as all of your audio outs. It supports five, actually supports 7.1 channel HD audio. That's on a Realtek ALC892 audio chip. And then you also have a Toslink connector right there, and that's going to be a digital audio out. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the ASRock A75M ITX Mini ITX Socket FM1 motherboard. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and you can find more videos just like it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.